Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence and your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures along had their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset in fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, we've moved through Thanksgiving here in the States. And officially, we are in the holiday season if we haven't already said that, right? So I'm traveling. I had the great honor of traveling out to Seattle to be with my son and family for the holidays. I'm usually the one that hosts Thanksgiving. It's kind of like my holiday. You know, my kids would always come to me or in earlier days, my kids and I would travel to my family and we would have holidays together. But this year, we decided to change it up. I let my son do the cooking. Him and his wife recently moved to Seattle. So we were out there. Her family was in. My daughter came down. What a great time. It really was. And you know what? It's really good when we can change it up, let go of the... I know it's a tradition and sometimes we're like, no, I have to have the same tradition. Sometimes we need to make new traditions and get out of our patterns. We really do. And I think, you know, when we travel, when we open up our horizons, we can experience life in a whole different perspective. Kind of what the Sagittarius season is all about. Travel, expand, open up your horizons. And I know for me, it always lets me reflect on what I have, what's going on with me, and it gives me a wider perspective of who I am. You know, sometimes we do. We have to challenge ourselves. We have to open up our horizons. We have to look at life from different perspectives and really understand, reflect. We're in retrograde, perfect word for retrograde energy. Reflect on what's going on and allow the purpose of who you are to come forward, which is what we're going to talk about in the episode today. So yes, I am in the midst of traveling, but you know, one of the things I had put on my vision board was work from anywhere. So here I am doing this episode today. I want to continue talking about the Akashic realm and all the amazing things that we can learn from it and why I choose to teach it and just not offer it as sessions. Sessions and readings, yes, they're very valuable. And if you haven't ever experienced one, you can come in for a session. And even in those, I do offer to make them interactive. We talk, we experience that. I ask you, how do you feel? What is this noticing for you and your body? Very powerful, very powerful for what we can uncover. And once you kind of have an idea of what the Akashic Records is about, once you have a little bit of intuitive knowledge, intuitive ability, or even just like the willingness to trust, their messages that come in for you. Working in the Akashic Records can have so many powerful benefits for you, which is why I do teach it. And my course is coming up. It begins in January, but I'm registering now and lots of great bonuses you can get if you join now. In fact, I do have a training coming up on December 11th, which is going to be all about the ways in which the Akashic Records can help you go deeper into your soul 
And we'll also look at five different ways why the Akashic Record is so needed right now, why this radical approach to opening up and awakening is so important all around us, all over the country, all over the world, really. And in this, I'm going to also talk about ways in which you can tell if you're ready to open up to reading your own records. You know, the winter is a perfect time because the soul is deep. We go in. And you also, it's a perfect time to connect with others and feel and see and know other experiences as well. It does put life into perspective. So I will put the link for the training in the show notes. And you'll also receive a guide too on working in the Akashic Records. Come join me. I also have a Reiki Master Retreat coming up in the spring of 2025. I know it seems a long way off, right? But I'm also offering an early bird discount to get you to commit. I believe when you commit early to an event like this, you are committing to yourself, to showing up, to prioritizing your life. And as you recognize that commitment to investing in you, you will grow. You will start the process from the moment you say yes. So if you are Reiki 1 or Reiki 2 certified, let's talk. I have a few incentives to offer you. I'll put that link in the show notes as well. So in today's episode, we're going to move a little forward talking about the Akashic Records, and we're going to talk about soul purpose. Very often people come to me for the idea of what is my soul purpose? I don't know what I'm here for. And many times it is a very good reason to work in the Akashic realm, to open up the records and ask these questions because our soul brings this forward from lifetime to lifetime with this deep inherent soul purpose of who we are. Now, Our life purpose, many people confuse life purpose and soul purpose, our life purpose can shift and change. And many times people wonder like, well, what's the difference, right? Soul purpose, as I see it, isn't so much about doing as it is about being. Your soul purpose is to be more in alignment with who you truly are, to be connected, to feel that compassion on how you express This beingness in the world is the key to living your soul purpose. I mean, you can have many different life purposes. I know I have. You could be a post office attendant in a small town and still be living your life purpose connected to your soul. Your soul purpose is in direct alignment with that life purpose when you are in alignment. You have this energy that comes in. Now, they don't have to be the same vocation. For instance, maybe you're studying Reiki and maybe you're looking at ways in which you can be empowered. It doesn't mean that you then you have to be a Reiki practitioner. It means this is going to help you be in alignment with that inner part of who you truly are. And maybe there is a sense of you wanting to help others in the world. You could be a teacher, right? And teachers can come in to help through all of this energy to help to serve to educate And that can be part of what you do. I know I've had many different jobs through my career. I really have. I mean, I was in the, I was in the performing arts. I was in the jewelry arts. And now here I am in the healing arts. And my soul keeps carrying the same purpose. If I go back to journals early on, even when I was a kid, I've always been talking about what I'm doing now. Interesting, right? So for me, it became the idea of being an artist of the spirit. I am an artist and I fought it for many years. No, I'm not an artist. I'm going to be a starving artist, right? But I am an artist of the spirit and I help others connect with that creative part of who they are, their intuition, the creative faculty and how they can find and live their dreams. So for me, it has woven together into my life purpose. Now, there was a time when I was working in the jewelry industry and I thought, oh, I got to switch. I got to go be a Reiki practitioner. Okay, so maybe I did it a little bit on the side, but my purpose there was also to help others, also to facilitate the ways in which they used their own creative forces and what they were doing. I didn't really recognize it at the time, and it was a lot of soul searching for me. And once I finally recognized, Tara, you're an artist, you're an artist of the spirit, everything came full circle. But there were so many ways that I recognized I have opened up to be that artist of the spirit in helping others. So everybody can have different ways to work with their soul purpose, to work with their life purpose. But when we find that connection, it is so gratifying. When you can find that connection to being 
with your soul and showing up in what you do every day, it is very empowering. Many people become unhappy in their job, but really it's because they are out of alignment with what they're doing and what their soul desires to do. So often we go down that path doing what we're expected to do. I've got to do this. I've got to run the family business. And yet we're out of alignment with what we truly want to do. So when you start to recognize the things that bring you joy, that make you happy, then you can start to align that soul purpose with your life purpose. And then the worlds begin to mesh. And then you feel this empowerment coming forward. One of the examples I like to use beyond my clients, one of the examples I like to use is, and I've heard Oprah talk about this. Oprah's talked about how her purpose really wasn't about being a talk show host. Her purpose was really about opening up for wisdom to bring it forward, to help people express and recognize, even through adversity, how they can move forward into their life. She was being the change and expressing that in so many ways, which we all recognize, right? She was living her purpose by being a public figure to help people in so many ways. Oprah has this innate ability to be a teacher and a leader. She could have done it in many ways. And so that's what we want to recognize. Your life purpose can change. Your soul purpose continues through lifetime and lifetime over and over, which is why the Akashic Records is such a great place to activate this energy for you. So yes, we all have the ability to go in to ask these questions. And if you are a little lost, maybe you aren't familiar with what it is that is making you happy. That's why we need a spiritual practice. Our spiritual practice can go in deep because your sole purpose, again, is something you've been doing over lifetime and lifetime. But if we're riddled with all this stress and anxiety and expectations on other people, it is hard to know what we are intending to do in this lifetime. And many times people can get hung up on, oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, right? All this stress and angst, but we don't have to make it so hard. The questions we ask in the Akashic realm is, what brings you joy? What is that innate ability you have, that natural compassion you show the world? What is that? That's what we want to bring forward. And that's what we want to figure out how you can bridge your life purpose with that underlying soul purpose that you have. Our soul purpose continues on and on and on. We start to understand more and more about what it is, what those feelings are that keep surfacing. Maybe we keep stuffing them down because we are caught in work that we don't want to do. But many times, like I was talking about in the jewelry industry, I thought I had to switch to what I was doing. But when I recognize I am helping, I am serving right here, right now. I also had two children to support. It allowed me to be patient with my life and to let it unfold in its natural way. And one of the things we also can do in the Akashic realm is look to the future. And so sometimes what I start to see with people and we start to uncover is how these two start to blend. It's like a little point that comes together. All right. So at first it may seem far off, but yet the more you recognize, I have this compassion, I have this joy, I want to bring this forward. Even your day to day can be so much more fulfilling. I know it's fascinating and I know for myself and my clients, when they connect these paths, the dots, they feel very much empowered to do so. So let's take a moment to pause and center and go into our Akashic Records and connect with our guardians. Let's call them in. Let's see if you can notice what you notice. And let's just ask your guardian to show you what brings you joy and happiness in your own life. So let's begin. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes. Taking a nice deep inhale and exhale. Calling in the sacred elements. Calling in the fire to access this energy, your soul going deep. Calling in the element of air to clear the mind, clear the space. Calling in the element of water to open the heart, to move the emotions. Calling in the element of earth to ground, to center. Inhale, take another deep breath up the body. And as you exhale, call all your energy into you. Call it in. 
Inhale, opening up the breath all the way up the body. And as you exhale, begin to align, calling in the spiritual body to align right on top of the physical, the emotional, the mental bodies. Centering, grounding. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body, opening up beyond the crown. Exhale, calling in absolute light, streams of grace all around. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And now as you exhale, dropping right into the heart, right into the deepest part of your heart, feel that connection, your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you are loved, guided, protected. Feeling all this energy coming in around us as we set this sacred space. We call in our Reiki masters. We call in our teachers, the healing guides. We call in the angels to open the heart. We call in the crystal beings for amusement, magnification, calling in your higher self to receive these messages for you right above the crown. Feel this alignment. Taking another deep inhale as we breathe up into the higher realms, opening up these channels of light. Exhale, breathing all the way down, activating this radiance within you, your light body. Inhale, opening up. Exhale, breathing all the way back down. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. Exhale, all the way back down. Taking another deep inhale as we begin to move into the higher rounds of possibility. Moving through the veil of roses, we access the keys. Asking permission to enter into the Akashic realm. Honoring your path, your light. As we move into the Akashic realm, we move through these tunnels of light. Imagine, pretend, visualize yourself surrounded in this galaxy of light. As you move into this hall of energy, notice. Notice this realm for you. Notice the records, the books, the lights. Feel yourself in this hallway of energy. As we begin, we call in our guardians, calling in, allowing the guardians to come forward. Notice, how does your guardian show up for you? Ask. You can even ask, are you my guardian? Receive the message. As I see it, the guardians come holding big books, Big books of your knowledge, your path, your light. And so as we go to ask, the question becomes, what is it that brings my soul the joy, the happiness easily? Ask that for you. And allow yourself to open up to just receive that knowledge right through the higher self, bring it in for you. Don't doubt it. Don't dismiss it as too easy. Allow that beingness, that joy, that light to come forward. Notice. Notice the heart opening. Just sending a little Reiki to your heart. Han sensation in, Han sensation in, Han sensation in, to open up for you. Deep into your heart, notice. Perhaps you hear the message. Perhaps you see colors or a vision of you. Perhaps you feel the joy, the happiness. Perhaps you just know it to be true. Bring this message in for you. You can ask your guardian, confirm, is this so? This is what I feel, ask, notice. Allow these messages to come in. Trust. 
your soul, your light. Take a deep inhale and exhale, bringing all these messages right into your heart. We ask for this vibration of light, of information to be with you, to continue to receive these messages. Sealing in this vibration, show gray, show gray, show gray. Taking another deep inhale, breathing up. And as you exhale, we start to bring all this energy back in. We start to move back down through these tunnels, noticing the messages that have come forward, coming all the way back through the veil of roses, coming back into your present day. Feel yourself grounding, receiving these messages. And as we go to separate out our energies, imagine a crystal ball with your name in red and just imagine reaching up and releasing all this energy, anything else that needs to come into your consciousness, bring it in through the crown all the way down deep into the body. As we go to separate out, inhale, offering gratitude for our guardians, offering gratitude for these messages that have come forward for you. One more deep inhale and exhale all the way down deep into the earth. And as you're ready, blink in the eyes back open, coming back. So take a moment, notice what occurred what you felt or saw or heard or just know. Make some notes, make some journals, entries. Your soul, your light. This is how we work in the records. This is how we bring those messages forward. Yes, in the group, we'll confirm, we'll talk about, we'll share. Having that confirmation is very valuable until you're familiar with it. But this is one of the ways in which working in the Akashic Records can help you. There are so many, so many ways. It has been invaluable in my life to understand past life, the energies of my ancestors, how they combine. We'll talk about that as well. So for now, notice what you notice. I do have a Black Friday bonus, only two spots I'm offering. Check it out. Maybe they're already gone, but check it out half price. And I have other Black Friday bonuses as well. So as you move through this holiday season, be sure to take time for you. I do have a how to survive as an empath for the holiday season. One of my Black Friday bonuses, a really great one as well. Self-care is so important right now. We can get overwhelmed. We can get with all the busyness, busyness, business, and forget about our soul's journey. Don't forget about it. Show up each and every day with your soul. Very important. Bots going on. I've got a Reiki circle coming up at the Yoga Lab December 14th. And I'll be offering a winter solstice at Clubhouse on Highland on December 21st. The solstice, lots of fun, color, light, crystals. Don Cassisi will be doing some yoga with us. We'll have a fire circle, cacao. And we have other guests contributing as well. Be sure to check it out on my website or my Instagram for the most up-to-date information. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is your host, Terri Ann Hyman. To your spirit, namaste.